Welcome to the Senior View. Today we have a very special guest. His name is John Palmer. He is an author of a very well-known book within our town. The story of Miss Ellen Duffy. She was a teacher. And it's by our dear John Palmer, Hopkinton Historical Society. It goes back to a very painful time within our community. I would say about 1919, John, 1920. Yep, both years. Started in December 1919. It didn't end until March of uh, uh, 1920. So it was about a three month episode. Okay. And there was a unfortunate incident between her and a student. Believe it or not, about 60 residents were involved in this, in the sense of the anger, of the court cases, and the results. John, would you like to please start and tell us the story of Miss Ellen Duffy? Yes, I'd be glad to. Um, and thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure. Um, and it's a good chance for me to talk about the book. Uh, I'm, I'm a real believer in it, and uh, I, I'm hoping to convey some of my uh, enthusiasm. Anyways, um, this really began uh, maybe around the first of the year, uh, first of this year, 2020, um, uh, last year, 2020, and um, when I was down at the Historical Society, I'm a volunteer there on Mondays, and I was just um, going through some of their files, just poking around, seeing what's, what's in the files that I hadn't checked before, and I came across this thick file of uh, newspaper articles, and and it was about Ellen Duffy, and I didn't know, I knew nothing about Ellen Duffy. Uh, I had asked uh, Linda Conley, our uh, archivist, and she gave me a little rough idea of what it was, but uh, she didn't really speak of speak like she knew the the story. So I started looking at the newspaper articles, and the, the first one caught my attention, and the second one got it further, and. It was really quite interesting. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put the newspaper articles down. And um, that, that led me to this idea of maybe it would be nice to um, relate this, this story. And it's not, it's not a story, it's really facts. This, this all happened. But to relate this in, in print for the Historical Society because um, I, that would, it would give them some, some notoriety, some prominence, and, and uh, help, help with the story. And that's how it started. Anyways, um, the first thing that I came across at, at was the, the uh, it was about the firing of Ellen Duffy, but um, the story is more complicated than that because she was a teacher, she got fired, uh, and I'll tell you a little about that. And then uh, there was litigation resulting that by uh, both sides, and I'll tell you about that. And, and then there was finally a, a special town meeting that kind of brought this all to a, a head. Uh, but it didn't really finally resolve until the annual town elections in uh, 2020, uh, 1920, excuse me. This is 100 years ago, 101 years ago, so. Um, what did she do, John? What was the incident? Well, there is a buildup to this. Uh, there was, uh, and I, I wanna, I wanna uh, show you, uh, put up, a, a slide with the names of some uh, prominent parties in this story, uh, and you, you you may know some of the names, but um, they, anyways, there's, there was a school committee. Uh, there was Timothy Roach. He was the chairman of the school committee. It was a three part, a three member school committee. Uh, Timothy Roach was the chairman. Uh, there was a 
an appointed member of the school committee, uh, Thomas Elliott, and then there was the superintendent of schools. His name was Warren Lyman. He was actually the superintendent of schools for the uh, for the for town of Ashland and the town of Hopkinton. And his he was appointed by the state, and his salary was set by the state. One town paid so much, and the other town paid the balance. And then there was Miss Duffy. She was a younger school teacher. She gradu graduated from Radcliffe, I think it was in 1913. She taught maybe a year in, I think it was Weymouth, that, that's where she was from. Anyway, she came to Hopkinton in, in 1916, and she was a teacher in the high school. She taught English and Latin, very popular with the students. And then the, the last character we have today is Edward Carr. He was the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. And both Mr. Carr and Mr. Roach were authoritarians. They, uh, they, were, the, they were the boss. So this story really began, and remember this is uh, the time of wor the, the World War, what we call World War I now, but then it was the World, the World War, the Great War. And Mr. Roach, the chairman of the school committee, uh, did not want to be drafted into, into military service. And he uh, said he was not healthy enough to do that, and he got his mother to write a note saying he, he was not a healthy person. Anyways, uh, Mr. Lyman, the, the chairman of the school committee, criticized him for this action. And of course, that set off a, a, a little battle between uh, Lyman and Roach. And then Miss Duffy stepped in, and she, she sided with, uh, with the superintendent, Mr. Lyman. And so she got herself on the outs with the school school committee, uh, with Mr. Roach. And remember, he's the uh, he's a boss. He's a strong-willed man. Well, he may be the boss, but she verbally abused a child, right? Well, we haven't got to that yet. Okay. So we have this background of this this the, the, there's a uh, uh, an animosity between. Roach and Miss Duffy. And then um, there was a plan to oust her, but uh, nothing, really, nothing really happened on that until December 6th. It was a Saturday evening. Uh, the school board met. There was a posted meeting. Uh, and that time they, they, they met in the high school, which is the old high school, um, 85 Main Street. And uh, the, it was posted, the word had gotten out that Miss Duffy was about to get fired. And so there was a huge crowd uh, attending there. It was ma maybe 500 people that came to this meeting. Uh, they couldn't get in because there was so many of them. And so uh, there was a, a uh, list of, P uh, of invitees that uh, Mr. Roach said could come. So he allowed certain people in, uh, Miss Duffy not included, uh, most of the townspeople not included. But anyway, at that, um, at that meeting of the school committee, they took a vote and they fired her. And they gave, they gave three reasons why she got uh, fired. One was she um, flirted. She was in the classroom. And the flirtation was she waved her hand at a passing uh, motor car. They, at that time, we had streetcars in Hopkinton, and they went by every hour on the hour, and the streetcar driver was her boyfriend. And so when the, car, when the streetcar was going by, she waved out, she waved out the window, and uh, so that was one of the charges that she, uh, she flirted during class. The second charge was she insulted uh, 
one of the students' mothers, and this was a most interesting uh, situation. It was an English class, and they, the students had to go up to the blackboard, and the assignment was to write a letter to a, to the, a Pullman company requesting a uh, birth for uh, your mother. So, uh, and this time the trains had uh, sleeping, sleeping cars. And so um, the student was, uh, was uh, Eugene uh, Madigan was his name. And he wrote, the, he wrote on the blackboard, I request, a, a, a reser I want to make a reservation for my mother on a Pullman. And when he was done, she said, very nice, but you omitted one important thing. You forgot to specify whether your mother w would want an upper or lower birth. And she's, and then Miss Duffy went on and said, surely she would want a lower breath. She would not want to climb to an upper breath. So this story came home with Eugene to his mother, and she got offended. She took it as an insult. And so that was the second charge. She insulted one of the students' mothers. And the third charge was insubordination. And I think the insubordination was the fact that uh, she stood up for the su the um, f for the, the superintendent of the schools instead of for the school committee, and that was an insubordination. Anyway, she was fired. Um, a near riot broke out after that. Um, the uh, word got out. Uh, the townspeople were outraged. Uh, there was bad feelings already between the townspeople and the school committee, uh, and and because of the uh, infighting going on in the school committee, the uh, graduation exercises for the, for the June uh, 1919 class never took place. They couldn't resolve what to do. So they had no graduation classes, mm -hmm. and so the parents of that, uh, any parents that had a graduating student, and there were some in the crowd, they were already uh, terribly upset with the school committee. So anyways, the town pe people got very upset, and this started what was called the school war, and it went on for a while. Uh, the, so the, uh, the, the, what I've do, what, I, what I'm doing this morning is, and this is a, this is a complex story. Uh, there are, uh, as I said, 60 different, uh, characters of people, Hopkin and residents in the book. Uh, these, I, the, on the chart, I have the principal ones. So I, I wrote, the, I, read, I read every newspaper article, spent some time, organized them, put them in uh, more or less chronological order so I could understand the, the, the sequence of events. Mm -hmm. And what I'm, what I'm hoping to do this morning is at least go through in some detail the first of, I call it the three parts to the story, the firing, the uh, resulting litigation and the special town meeting. I'm hoping to give you a good sense of what's going on here through the firing and then maybe uh, at a later time, um, if you're interested, we can do more. Um, or perhaps you'll get interested in, in want to acquire the book and read it for yourself. But anyways, the um, the the uh, the six uh, six I wrote I wrote this book from the articles and what I did is I put for each uh, each sec segment I put the the newspaper and the headline and then I I did I put excerpts in from each of the articles that followed that 
The, the first headline was on the December 8th issue of the Boston Post. Incidentally, uh, at that time, people read newspapers, and there was, uh, the Boston papers were heavily uh, read in Hopkinton. We had the Post, the Herald, and the Globe, mm -hmm. and there was also the Framingham paper, Framingham News. So there was a lot of newspapers. Uh, that's how people got their information from, was from the newspapers. But the Boston Post on December 8th reports that Miss Ellen Duffy, a teacher of English and Latin at Hopkinton High School, who was discharged by the school committee for a alleged insubordination and conduct unbecoming a teacher, refused to be fired. She defied authorities by appearing at school to conduct her classes and won a victory when almost every one of the 53 high school pupils threatened to walk out on strike unless she was allowed to teach. So even though she was fired on a Saturday night, she showed up on Monday morning to teach. And um, that will that plays out a little bit more, and, I'm, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. But anyway, this article goes on to say, never in the history of Hopkinton has an issue so steered, stirred the residents as the bitter row which has grown out of the expulsion of Miss Duffy. Voting for Miss Duffy's dismissal on Saturday evening, December 6th, where school committee man Timothy Roach and appointee member Thomas Elliott. Edward Condon, the third member of the school committee, voted to retain her. The vote took place at an invitee-only meeting at the high school. The meeting was advertised as public, but when Mr. Roach saw the size of the crowd gathered outside, he limited, he limited attendance to only specific persons. Miss Duffy and about 500 townspeople were, were refused admission. The next newspaper article was the Boston Herald, and this is the one in which they get into the uh, specific charges against Miss Duffy. Uh, Deputy Sheriff William Walsh notified Miss Duffy that she had to leave the school building or she would be placed under arrest. That triggered a factional war that lasted more than three months in which practically all 2,500 residents participated. Immediately, 47 of the 53 high school students declared they were on strike and joined by many of their parents began parading through the streets of the town shouting they would not go back until the school board reinstated Miss Duffy. The strike organizers were senior, junior and senior class presidents, John Oakley and Joseph Deneen. School committee men Roach and Elliott thereupon threatened to expel all the strikers unless they returned to the class at once. Developments followed in rapid order with the re result that summonses were issued for seven prominent citizens to appear in court. The summonses charged inciting assault on a public official, assault and battery, and disturbance of the peace. The particular charges asserted against Miss Duffy were that she waved her hand from a school window at the conductor of a passing trolley car, that she made insulting remarks to a pupil about his mother, and that she openly upheld the superintendent of schools and Mr. Condon in their controversy with Mr. Roach and Mr. Elliott. So there we go with the, the charges. So you can sense that this is going to be an interesting story when somebody gets fired for waving their hand at a, at a uh, streetcar conductor and uh, the, the, the insult to Mrs. Madigan about the, uh, the writing exercise becomes very uh, amusing. This, this story is serious in, in uh, one aspect, and it's extremely humorous uh, 
in others. And, and because of this, um, it's not lighthearted, because of this, I guess you'd call it this ridiculous situation, it became, uh, caught the public's attention throughout the whole state. Everybody, this, this story took on statewide um, uh, publicity. It was well known. Uh, it was so insane. But at any rate, um, the Boston Herald reports that Hopkinton calls on state police. Edward Carr said the, the outlook is so sinister that he was compelled to call for state police officers to guard the town against possible mob law. The discharge of Miss Duffy caused such a split that friends of long standing had become enemies and on the street groups of citizens openly discussed taking the law in their own hands. So we have a wild scene going on in Hopkinton. In the Boston Globe of December 9th, it, re, it re, reports that uh, warrants for seven were issued in the Hopkinton Row. The insult against Miss Duffy resulted from an incident during a classroom exercise when one of the Madigan children was asked to write a letter to a railroad company ordering a Pullman berth for his mother, but he omitted to state whether the berth should be an upper or lower one. Pointing out the mistake, Miss Duffy said, surely your mother should have a lower berth. Your mother would not want to climb into an upper berth. The incident was reported to Miss M Mrs. Madigan, who took it as an insult. So we have that going on. Then it goes on. In the Boston Herald of December 10th, it's reported that hundreds of indigent citizens of all walks of life signed a call for a special town meeting in defiance of Chairman Edward Carr of the Board of Selectmen and Timothy Roach of the school committee. Then it goes on and says, the only daily excitement in Hopkinton's truly rural life was the appearance of streetcars once an hour, distribution of the mail, and the, the arrival of, news, of the newspapers with Hopkinton's suddenly achieved notoriety emblazoned on the first pages. John, we only have four minutes left here. Okay. Um, how, what, how, how did she go on with her life? Did she stay in Hopkinton afterwards? Uh, or did she Yeah, leave? Miss, Miss Duffy, uh, Miss Duffy um, suffered through this situation. Um, she came out of it fine. Uh, she uh, she was a young teacher at this time. She didn't retire. Uh, she stayed in Hopkinton, and she didn't retire until 1954, I believe it was. Um, she was on the uh, cover of the yearbook in the year she retired, and so and she was uh, had many roles in the school. I think she was principal at one time. But anyway, she was a very successful uh, personality. So she went on with teaching after all this incident. Right. Oh, she continued to teach, yes. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. So anyways, um, and the, the, uh, I wanted to go, go through some of the humor that we had in this, but uh, because of time, uh, we may not be able to do that. But I do want to let you know that um, if you're interested in acquiring a copy of the book, it's ten dollars. Uh, I have my contact information here. Uh, you can uh, contact me, and I will make I'll make the arrangements. The money goes to the historical society, uh, so um, I'm I'm interested in uh, more people knowing about this. Uh, I've gotten very good um, feedback from uh, those that knew of Miss Duffy. They, mm -hmm. they said they knew of the incident, but they knew there was something that happened then, but they didn't know this, the details. That's because it was so, it was so long ago. So uh, it's surprising. But um, I'd want, I want you to read about the, spe uh, particularly the special town meeting. It was, it was outrageous. Uh, I don't want to tell you about it 
because it'll take it'll take all the fun uh, and surprise. But <laughs> we can't do that, John. <laughs> yeah. No, we want to keep it. We want to keep the surprise. Yes, but. yes, yes. John, I want to thank you so much for what you did. John, how long did it take you to write that book? Well, it took a while. It took me a couple of months. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it was all a learning experience because I, I did it on Word on my computer, and then um, I was saying, this is pretty good. I, I wanted to see if I can get it printed. And I went to Staples, and the price was very high. And then I found this printing company called 48 Hour Books. They're out of Akron, Ohio. Um, they're the ones that actually designed the cover for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. they've done a great job. Okay. Uh, so okay. we, I've gotten, uh, I think, 150, 200 copies. Uh, mm -hmm. I have about 50 does left. The library, right does our library have copies of this? I, they got two copies from me. And the Senior Center Library should Senior have Center, I, I... When it opens up. Yeah. Okay, John, we got to go. We have only a few seconds. I want to thank you so much for well, coming today. I appreciate the opportunity, and thank you. You are welcome. And we thank you for watching, and have a good night.